Hey guys, it's Dave. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video, and for that, I apologize. I've just been a little bit busy. Um, but a lot has happened since the last time I put up a video. I think the last one I did was mentioning that Steve Jobs had uh, announced that he was sick, he wasn't feeling well. Um, at that time, he still hadn't said that he was um, going to take a leave from Apple, so that's something new that I haven't talked about yet. Um, also, the since I came back, iLife and iWork came out, and we had the whole... Uh, Macworld thing that went down. Also at CES, the Palm Pre was announced. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but I don't really want to do a long video. I just want to kind of touch on a couple of these things really quickly uh, without taking up too much time. So I'll start off with Steve Jobs. Obviously, it's a, a sad thing to see in the tech industry. Uh, whether you're a Windows fan, a Mac fan, Linux fan, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, he's a bit of a revolutionary, and it's tough to see him being sick. I'm hoping that's all it is. Um, it's kind of hard to respect what they say, I guess. Uh, he says that he's going away for six months. It's hard to assume that that's really the case when they've kind of been a little um, slow to announce some of the, the health issues and whatever. But honestly, at this point, I just say respect his um, privacy. If he's going through a rough time, let him go through it. Uh, nobody likes to be sick, especially if it's a serious sickness, which it very well may be. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick. I don't really want to make a big deal of it and we'll see. Hopefully we'll see him in June or thereabouts and he'll come back and he'll be just as healthy as ever and uh, things will continue as normal. So iLife was the next thing that came out since the last um, video I made and I can't really say much about it because I don't have it. I didn't purchase it. Um, it looks like a strong suite of applications. Uh, I've heard a little bit of noise made about the fact that iLife 2000 9 has iMovie, the new version, which is for the most part the same thing as iMovie 08, obviously with the new additions of um, uh, things like image stabilization and the ability to do precision edits, which sounds really appealing to me, but it seems like most of the people who didn't like iLife 08 because it was so much different than iLife 06, they're still kind of upset about it and they're not too uh, happy about the interface and so on and I can't blame them for that if they're used to iLife 06 that's what you're used to it's hard to make an adjustment but me personally I never really started using iMovie until iMovie 08 so I'm looking forward to trying out iMovie 09 obviously there was also um, the uh, iPhoto um, stuff where you can do places um, and faces that's some pretty interesting technology with the face recognition and so on um, but like I said I haven't used it so I can't really comment on it but that's one thing I've been looking out for um, there's also iWork that came out uh, a little bit before iLife, um, and again, I haven't used it, so I can't really comment much. I will say that the part that excited me the most about the iWork announcement was the um, keynote application that goes on your iPhone or iPod Touch. That alone made me kind of want to... I'm traditionally a PowerPoint user just because the places that I use or do presentations are traditionally Windows, so I mean, it's just easier to do a PowerPoint than it is to try and mess around with a, um, a keynote. But that announcement alone kind of made me wish that I had a, an, opportunity to do, an opportunity to do a keynote using Apple's keynote application because that's just so cool that you can, you know, uh, have notes on your iPod Touch or iPhone, also change slides right from your iPod Touch or iPhone. That's really cool to me. And I'm looking forward to further applications like that that integrate with OS X and the traditional Apple applications um, and work in cool, unique ways like that. So obviously there was also CES since the last time I talked. The I've messed around with the Windows 7 beta, and that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. I've made a post or two about that on my blog at davekemick.com slash blog if you want to see uh, what I have to say about that in further detail. I'm excited for it. Um, I think it's Vista done right, as has been said by a few of the tech pundits. Um, it's definitely an improvement. It runs really great on modest hardware. I did a virtual machine on my Mac with Windows 7, and it was only running 512 megabytes of RAM. I wanted to purposely make sort of a, a small amount of RAM just to see how well it ran, and it ran really well. So this might be the operating system that gets me excited about having a, a netbook. Um, before, I don't like using XP. It just feels really old and outdated, but Vista is such a, a resource hog that I couldn't ever justify running such a an intensive operating system on a netbook but maybe by the time Windows 7 comes out I might pick up like an, an HP Mini or something like that or a Dell Mini or 
can't really remember <laughs> the names they have for them, but um, that's making that sort of area a lot more interesting because there's it's now... 1230. 1230, thank you, Mac. Um, it's, there's now an operating system, aside from Linux, that's built specifically to run on that modest hardware, which is interesting. Uh, there was also the Palm Pre announcement. Um, there's a lot of uh, drama going down right now about the Palm Pre. Um, when I first saw the... I watched the whole keynote that uh, Palm did at CES, and when I first watched it, I was so excited. The whole way through, I thought, this is great. This is the first true competitor to the iPhone. And then it got to the end, and they said it was Sprint exclusive. And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. When is Verizon going to pick up one of these, you know, big name... Besides the Storm, I guess that would be that would qualify the BlackBerry Storm, but one of these big name touch devices that I'm really excited about, like the iPhone or the Palm Pre. If the Palm Pre was coming out on Verizon, which I'm a that's my carrier right now, I would wait for the Palm Pre to come out, and then I would pick up a Palm Pre and stay with Verizon. But as it is right now, I'm waiting until WWDC when we'll probably see some iPhone updates, uh, perhaps some new features, at least probably capacity upgrades. Um, and then I think I'm going to switch to AT&T and pick up a, uh, an iPhone. But I was really excited about the uh, Palm Pre, and then they just kind of, you know, stuck that knife in me with the Sprint exclusivity, which I guess, from what I've heard, Sprint has a really good data network, but their customer service is lacking, and I'm not even sure if we get coverage in my area, so I'm not so sure about that. But that looks to be the first true competitor to the iPhone. And because of that, there's been a little bit of... Um, drama going back and forth between Apple and Palm Pre. Obviously Apple has a right to defend their uh, patents and there's some hubbub going down about maybe Palm Pre is borrowing a little bit of patented uh, technologies and so there looks to be a, a legal battle that might ensue between the two companies. Me personally I would like to see Apple just kind of step back and leave that alone. I understand that as a business, as a company, as a corporation they have the obligation that they have to defend their patents otherwise they're meaningless. So I respect that but I kind of I'd like to see some true competition in the space if only because it'll make the iPhone better, a better product in the long run. So that's exciting to me. I like the um, web OS. I like how it synchronizes with your contacts. You know it pulls down information from Facebook, things like pictures. Um, that's really exciting stuff. As a developer, the uh, developing applications for the Palm Pre looks pretty easy. As long as you're a, um, a bit of a web developer, they said you could use JavaScript, CSS, and so on. Um, that's interesting. So I'm just looking forward to that. We obviously won't know anything about that until the Palm comes out. And they also said they were going to support other carriers. The Palm Pre wouldn't just be the only WebOS phone that they make. So. Um, We'll still look and see, and maybe they'll release something on Verizon. Who knows? Hopefully it's not just like an HTC or some other um, off-brand um, phone maker running the WebOS. I would like to see a Palm Pre exactly like it is on Verizon or for whatever carrier I'm using at the time. I also, one other thing that I really think they trumped Apple with was the uh, charging technology. Um, at the end of the keynote presentation, they showed some of the accessories, um, and one of them was just a little... Um, sort of dock, not really, it was just like a little pad almost that you can place your Palm Pre on and without having it connected to anything, no um, cord going from the phone to the dock or anything, it would automatically charge and that's really cool. I think that's uh, some interesting stuff. And Kevin Rose, I was watching one of the Dignation um, episodes not too long ago and he's a well-known Apple fanboy, I guess you would use the term. Um, he said even that made him, you know, feel like, God. Oh, Geez, you know, I wish Apple would have thought of this first. That's how cool this is. So I think Palm Pre has a good shot at making a run at the smartphone market, the touchscreen smartphone market. Um, I just hope that they can overcome being Sprint exclusive. That's one of the biggest downfalls of the iPhone is that it's AT&T exclusive. I'd love to see these phones become platform or carrier independent so that more people can get them in their hands and uh, I can, most importantly, I can use them. Um, so that's pretty much it for now. Like I said, I've taken a little bit, bit of a break. I'll try to start putting out more videos, but uh, until then, take it easy. We'll see you soon.